Father, in the name of Jesus, first we want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us the opportunity and the time to come worship you, God. We thank you that we have the will and the desire to serve the one true and living God. And you are that God, and God, we thank you so much for allowing us to gather in this one place, God, for only one purpose, and that is to give your name the praise, that is to give your name the glory, that is to give your name the honor. And Father, we thank you for it is a privilege for us to be able to call you Father. And you're not a father that is deaf to the cries of your children. But God, we thank you that you hear us. You hear our every cry. You hear our every need. And God, we thank you that you came tonight for only one purpose. You came to meet every need. You came to fulfill every promise, every blessing, every miracle. God, you came to bestow on us tonight. So God, we thank you just for being God. And if we didn't ask you for anything, God, we thank you that we don't have to just because you are God. And there are just things that you do just because you hold the title of being God. And we thank you, and we thank you, and we thank you some more. Now, God, we pray and we ask, God, that you touch every heart, touch every mind, and every soul that is present in this place. God, we ask that you touch me every need. God, you know every need, name by name, person by person. God, we ask that you touch every single person. Let not one person leave the way that they walk in. God, we ask that everybody who is in this place right now, God, we thank you that they're all going to be changed in a way, some subtle and some great, but God, we thank you for what you're doing in every single one of the lives of the people that are present. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you send your word, send your word, a word that will heal, a word that will deliver, and a word that will set free, God, to the one who came questioning. God, we ask that you bring every answer. God, we thank you that you're absolving us from every confusion. And God, we thank you for that you're answering every question that we have, everything that we need from you. God, we thank you because you're going to send it through your word tonight. Now, God, we ask that your presence fall in this place like it has never been before. Let it fall in this place to where every doubter in this room will leave believing you, not just knowing who you are, but God, believing in who you are. Not just believing, but God, experiencing you. God, let everybody have an experience with you, an experience that will be life-changing, an experience God, that they haven't experienced before. And God, the fires that you set tonight, we thank you that the fires that you set is going to ignite to the fires in our family and the family and the fire in our friends. God, we thank you that we're not going to be selfish with you, but God, what we gain today, we'll use to spread your love, spread your joy, and spread your peace. These are other blessings we do ask. God, we ask that you bless the praise team, bless the musicians, bless everyone who will go forth in this service. God, let them be used by you, but not only be used by you, touched by you. God, because they are your vessels, your willing vessels, and we ask that you don't leave them hanging as they have come to minister to your people. God, we ask that even as they minister, minister to them as well. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen.
know who they is, who they are. But you know who God is. God knows exactly who you are. Yes. Sure, exactly who you are. Anybody know that he knows your name? Yes. And he calls you by name. Every single day of your life. Your name is victory. Your name is, is righteous. You are the head, not the tail. You are above, not the head. You are what God says you are.
talk to me. Good evening, Kaya. This is truly indeed the day that the Lord has made. We will most certainly be glad and rejoice in it. Man, I, don't go to your spot, man. It's good to see you, though. My brother here, you know who he is. It's good to see you, though, tonight. Listen, I thank God for all of you being present uh, here tonight. It's an honor and a privilege to see all of you. I count it a um, blessing. Listen, I want to get right uh, to business tonight. Well, last week, we started our New Year's series, um, and we entitled it Forward Focus. Now, the word of our year as a ministry is forward. Everybody repeat forward. Forward. And we believe this year, every aspect of our life, whether it be spiritually, financially, uh, whether it be uh, mentally, any kind of area in our life, we believe that God will take us forward. So last week we talked about the fear of forward. That many times uh, going forward to where God wants to take us, in many ways can be fearful because we don't know what lies ahead. And so uh, last week we thank God for that word and so we want to build on tonight and tonight's scripture and our reading tonight will be coming from Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 2. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm going to do things a tad bit differently as far as our version of reading. Usually we read the CSB version, but tonight I want you to turn your Bibles to the New King James Version. Uh, the New King James Version uh, for our reading tonight because it holds a few words uh, that I want us to focus on. Again, Hebrews chapter 12, um, verses 1 through to the known script. All right, out of reverence and respect, you know I ask that we stand for the reading of God's word tonight. Listen, look at a neighbor while you stand and say, hey, friend. Hey, friend. Come on, talk to somebody. Say, hey, friend. Hey, friend. Are you ready for the word? Hey, friend. If you believe it, can we shout amen? Amen. And it reads like this, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, everybody say, let us. Let us. Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Stick a pin there, ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. Here's the Baptist part. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Now look at the other neighbor who you ignored the first time and say, friend. Y'all not talking to nobody. Say, friend. Oh, friend. Can I tell you something? You got too much baggage. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You, you got two much baggage. And uh, just for crowd participation, just so I can see who I'm talking to tonight, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you, your mood for the year is, uh, we catch your flights, not feelings? How many of you, like, you, you didn't discover, like, you got, okay, Jay, man, for the one others, right? You, you got at least three trips you want to take this year. One, Miami, for spring break. Other one, we want to go to Atlanta for our birthday. And the third one, just because you got a bonus, you just want to spend it and go somewhere, right? Um, and I've been like y'all. I, I like taking trips. And I usually prefer to take my trips on a plane. Uh, like to, I, I, I want to go on, on a plane because for me, I hate car rides. Like any ride more than two hours, I start getting irritated and frustrated. And I get mad. I don't want to talk to nobody. Like I'm just ready to get to where I want to go. I was that kid who asked 10 times, are we there yet? Like, that was me. And, and uh, for me, um, I love to catch flights. And the reality of it is, I'm starting to like it a little bit more every time I get on one. Because it's not the flying that I have an issue with. It's all that I got to do just to get on the plane. Like, you know, you got to check your bags in, and you got to do all this extra stuff. They got to search you and all of this stuff. And it just takes too long. It's too much of a complicated process for me to even want to get on planes anymore. 
And I'll never forget this one time I got on the plane and uh, there was this woman. And I ain't going to tell y'all what race she is or who she is. Y'all just figure it out. But, but this woman on our way to getting on the plane, she had a bag with her. And right before she got on the bag, one of the flight attendants or whoever looked at her and said, Ma'am, I'm sorry, but you can't take this bag on the plane with you. And she said politely and, and, and respectfully, and that lady who was getting on the plane, she got like real funky with like, why well, I can't take this bag on the plane with me? And the flight attendant politely said, ma'am, the reason you cannot take this bag on the plane is because it's too heavy. And because it's so heavy, it'll actually put the plane at risk of being weighed down. So she simply said, you cannot take this bag on the plane because it's too heavy and it'll weigh the plane down. Rip sweet, this plane is getting ready to try to go forward. But there was a bag who couldn't make it on the trip because it was too heavy. Yeah. And the risk was it would weigh the plane down yeah. from getting to its destination. Alex, you still think I'm talking about the plane? No, now I'm talking about some of our lives. That God is trying in 2022, like we declared last week, he's trying to take us forward. But there are certain baggages that cannot go with us to our forward destination because it'll weigh you down. Can I ask you a question tonight, friends? What's weighing you down in your life tonight? I, I ain't trying to get in your business, Kaya. I ain't trying to go, go there with you. I, I ain't even trying to get in your close friends. All I'm trying to do is get you to evaluate and ask yourself, what is it that's slowing me down from getting to the next level that God wants to take me tonight? And, and here it is, Hebrews chapter 12. It starts in verse 1. Look at the very first word, therefore. Because this Hebrew writer gives us a few tips on what it takes to go forward. And then this first word, therefore, anytime you see that word in the Bible, friends, that means you need to go back and read the previous verses of the previous chapter so that when you get to the next chapter where it says therefore, you will actually find out what it's there for. And so if you read all of Hebrews chapter 11, I don't have time to go over it, but simply all chapter 11 compiles of, by faith, so-and-so did this. By faith, so-and-so did that. Like, for instance, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. In all of Hebrews chapter 11, it's telling the stories in a brief synopsis of what they did by faith. And so now when it gets to Hebrews, Chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, after I've already explained to you the many heroes of faith, look what it says. We also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, stick a pin there. F -f first point, I just got to throw this in. You got to understand that you are not alone in this journey of life. Like, you're not the first person who's going through what you're going through. Because many times we live in a culture where we always feel like we're alone, that nobody understands. That, can we, let's be honest, how many of us, like, show of hands, have ever felt like we didn't have the right amount of support? Like, we felt like didn't nobody support us, or we didn't have enough support. Well, at that moment, you do gotta understand this text, the Hebrew writer lets us know, you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, in the spiritual realm, there are a great cloud of witnesses who are witnessing you run your race so you can go forward in the Lord, who are not only have been where you are, but they are also encouraging you along the way. And that's the point that we should really learn how to thank God for. Because when you realize that firstly, I have people who are there to support me along the way, but also I have people and there have been people who has been where I've been before. That you're not the only person who dealt with depression. David dealt with depression. You're not the only one who 
dealt with the loss of loved one. Many people have, have had to handle the loss of a loved one. You're not the only one who's struggled and failed a few classes before. There are others who struggled educationally. You're not the only one who's had to go through a bad breakup. You're not the only one who's had to deal with people who you didn't like and they didn't like you. And when you learn to appreciate the fact that God has surrounded you by such a great cloud of witnesses that ought to encourage you along the way. But then secondly, friends, it says since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, look what it says. Let us, everybody say us, lay aside every weight. Here's the reality. Here's the meat of the message today. That if you're going to go forward, you got to get rid of the weight that's in your life. You, you got to get rid of the extra baggage and weight that is in your life. That's why I asked you a few minutes ago, what's holding you down? What is it in your life that is weighing you down? For some, in certain relationships. That's weighing you down. You want to move forward, but because you're connected to certain people, they're hindering your process, your progress. For others, what is that way? That is weighing you down. For some of us, it's certain habits. That we want to move forward, but we can't break the habit that's holding us back. But honestly, in order for us to identify the way, we first have to accept the fact that we all have weights in our life. That everyone in this room has a weight. Whether it's the weight of holding up to a certain standard so you can please somebody else. Whether it's a weight of finally trying to finish your education. Whether it's a weight of, of you trying to prove somebody wrong. Whether it's this weight, this unfair weight that's been placed on you by a certain friend or family member and now you spend your whole life trying to make somebody proud. Maybe it's the weight of you trying to keep up an appearance on social media so you can look like you're keeping up with everybody else. What is your weight? And here it is. Hebrew writer says if we don't move forward, you got to lay aside all of your weight. Watch what he says. Lay aside every weight and sin. Because usually we always think the weights are our sins. But what this shows us in the text is lay aside your weight and your sin. Because it shows us that just because it's a weight and just because it's slowing you down, Abby, does not necessarily make it a sin. Because we often think, if I'm going to move forward, i got to get rid of my addiction that's a sin. If I'm going to move forward, I just got to keep stop fussing. If I'm going to move forward, I, I just got to learn how to, how to cut certain people off that's bad for me. If I'm going to move forward, I got to learn how to do relationships God's way and wait till marriage for sex. That we only view our weights as sin. But sometimes we have weights that's not even a sin. Sometimes we got a weight of always just being connected to certain people. Being their friend may not be a sin, but it's knowing you that. It's a way, but it's not a sin. Right? Being at that job where you know you're not at purpose, it's not a sin, but it's a way. And so the Hebrew writer lets us know clearly, you got to lay aside every weight and sin. Watch, he says, lay aside every weight and sin, but with that so easily ensnares us. Take a go down. What does the word ensnare mean? It means it traps you. The word ensnare means to be trapped. What are we trapped in tonight? Because so often we dibble and we dabble in our weight and in our sin. And we say, oh, it ain't going to hurt nothing. Just, just this one time. We dibble and we dabble with the alcohol use and, oh, it, it ain't much. It, you know, just one night. 
We dimple and, and we dabble with certain relationships. Oh, this is just for the summer. We dimple and we dabble and, and we say, oh, I can just watch this porno just one more time and I'll be good. We dimple and, and, and we dabble with, with certain friendships. I know they ain't good. They, 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 they my friends. I know they're not the people I'm supposed to be around, but they ain't hurting me. They're just funny. We dimple and we dabble, and after a while, we find ourselves trapped in it. Because let me tell you something. We're not Jesus. Jesus was the only person who walked this earth who could live amongst and around sin and still not sin. We're not as strong as Jesus. If you stay in sinful and in weighty environments, surely, it may be slowly, but it is surely that you will begin to trap it. Have you ever been in situations and you looked up and said, how did I even end up here? How did I even get caught in this situation? How did I even end up at this place? If it was never my intentions to be here, how did I end up here? What this Hebrew writer tells us is you've got to learn how to lay it aside you got to learn how to put it off because, watch, it so easily traps you. It is just saying it'll trap you. It's saying it so easily ensnares you. Let me tell you something. Whenever you dimple and dabble in certain ways and in certain sins, you, it, it's easy on the devil to get you trapped up. You, you're not so strong that you, you're smarter than the devil. It's easy for him to trap you. Stick a note here. That's why you got to learn how to have a constant prayer life with God. That's why you got to learn the importance of talking. That's why you got to learn how to do the Bible say, pray without ceasing. And so here it is. Let it side. Every weight and the sin we're so easily establish us. But, but here's the problem with many of us. The word of the year is we got to go what? Forward, thank you. The word of the year is we got to go what? Forward. That many of us, we're trying to go forward, but we want to pack a bag. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go forward. I, I, I'm going to do what God taught me to do, but I got to take some stuff with me just in case going God's way doesn't work out. So I'm going to move forward, but I'm going to take my bad attitude. Because the moment I get to where God has me, but I don't like somebody and they say something the wrong way, I can always go back to this and tell you a few words. So, so some of us we say, yeah, I'm going to go forward in relationships. God, I know you come into this relationship, but I'm going to still bring the same hurt from my past. So the next time they say something that triggers me, I can blame them for why I still can't trust. So we pack a bag. And, and then we say, yeah, I'm going to go forward in my ministry. But I'm going to take my pride with me. Because can't nobody tell me nothing. Uh -uh. Can't nobody tell me how to do my job. And, and so the next time I, I go into a situation or into a room or into a meeting and it makes me feel insecure, I bring my pride out to disguise my insecurity. And, and we pack a bag. And then for some of us, when it comes time to pick our friendships, yeah. I'm a key, I, I know God is trying to call me forward, and sometimes going forward means I have to let certain people go. But I'm going to bring this one because they are falling. And we've been friends since elementary. we got time to serve. So I'm, I'm going to keep them around. And then some of us, we say we're going forward. I've got to keep packing my bag because while I'm moving forward, then I, I also got to take certain habits with me. I, I gotta take certain habits with me. But because, you know, I, I move forward, but, but I, I still sometimes like to slip up and just indulge in my own muscle pleasures. So I'm packing my bag. Yeah, I, I know God is calling me forward in my education, but, but I'm gonna take the, the, this spirit that I know I should let go with this spirit of always quitting. Because the next time school gets hard, I'll just give up, stop studying. I'll just drop it you know. I'll take, I'll take this one too. Because I know God, you're calling me to go forward in 2022. I know you are. You've 
showed me it clear as day. But, but I got to pack a bag. I, I got to bring about some old mentalities. I, I got to bring about this old mentality because you never know when it'll come in hand. And so what we do, yep, God, I, I'm ready to go forward. I packed my bag. Now I'm ready to go. And if you notice, I only put in these small cups. But what we don't always understand is we think it's little, but it all ends up turning into one large plate. So we put this huge weight on it in my bag, and I can't even zip it up all the way. Because sometimes we want closure and we want clarity in situations, but we can't get it all the way because we still got too much baggage. But I finally make it work because I've become a pro at functioning in my own dysfunction. So I put on this bag. Yep, it's heavy. Life real is heavy. It's heavy. And, and I put it on and say, yep, God, I'm ready to go for it. Like I feel like the little kids who go to school and they backpack big and they just be backpacking around. <laughs> and that's how I am. That's how we look spiritually. God, I'm ready to go forward. Because what we do, we want to take our baggage with us just in case we don't like God's plan. We can always revert back to what we used to do. Oh, yeah, God. I, I know this new season, it, it caused me to be hurt by some people. So, so now I just go back to rolling up whenever I need peace. I get stressed, but I can go back to it. So here we are. We packed our bags ready to go forward. Can your homework assignment tonight be going home and evaluating if this is what you look like spiritually? Just go. And so here it is. Watch. We don't lay aside our weight and our sin, but we still have the nerve to try to run our race. Because the reality, friends, is going forward in 2022 requires you to run your race. Everybody has a race to run. Your race may not be my race. My race may not look like your race. But we all have a race to run. Yeah. And so here we are. We try to run this race with all this baggage. And we're running. And we've been running for Jesus a long time. Okay, some of y'all Baptists. And we're running. And we run, ooh, my back hurt. We run it, and we speed it up, because we're trying to keep up with everybody else. If I fall, you better not post it. And so we run it, and we run it. But real quickly, I got tired. Whew. I got tired. This is what we look like. We got all this baggage, and we get tired quickly. We, we, we got all this baggage, but now I feel like giving up. Because God, why can't I shame my depression issues? God, I'm trying to serve you, but for some reason I can't get over my anxiety. God, I'm, I'm trying to live for you, and I'm not trying to hurt this person, but for some reason, every time I look at my new, I always see the face of my old. But every time I try to move forward, I always hear and see the face of the daddy who was never there. And we get tired, but we say, God, I'm going to serve you anyhow. Let me run, because I've been running for Jesus a long time. Come on, y'all be quiet. And we run, ooh, my back hurts. 
to get mad at the preacher. You told me to keep having faith. I'm having faith. But, but, but I'm still struggling. You, you told me, Mama, you told me to pray. But I still can't even hear God's voice. And so what we do, we start blaming the preacher. Blaming the ministry. Blaming the job. Blaming our parents. Blaming our friends. Blaming God. And you're saying, God, where are you? God, I'm struggling. And God looks at you and says, it's because you still got on all this baggage. And it's weighing you down. And why are you expecting to go forward and faster if you're still holding on to stuff that's slowing you down? Why are you getting mad at me that you can't have peace when everybody in your environment is disturbing your peace and you don't have enough faith to let them go? So what God says is, if you want to run this race, efficiently, I'm stuck, efficiently, help me. And let me go. You got to learn how to do what? What the scriptures say? Lay aside. Every weight and every sin that so easily ensnares you or traps you. Now look what it says. I'm almost done. Run this race that's set before us. Watch. But look what it says. With endurance. So this Hebrew writer says, yeah, if you're going to really run this race, you got to learn how to have some spiritual endurance. Which means every time something gets hard, you can't quit. Because the reality of it is in our Christian lives, we're all going to have to endure some stuff. Right? We're all going to have to endure some stuff. That's why text says, Bible says, if you're going to follow Jesus, that's why Jesus said, you're going to have to bear your cross. And Father, because all of us have a cross. And what is it that you're having to endure that you don't want to? Because some of us, we, we get so quick. You end up one time to say something out of life, you cut off. You're going to have to endure some stuff. I ain't got one time to try, and if it don't work, I just quit and try something else. But you're going to have to endure. Everybody say endure. You got to learn how to keep going even though you're frustrated. Keep going even though you're mad. Keep going even though you got your feelings hurt. Keep going even though you feel like you were overlooked. Keep going because you got to endure. And so now, run this race with endurance. Look at verse 2. It tells us we're going to have to run this race. Now usually, when you think of a race, you oftentimes think if I'm racing against somebody. But notice the text, when it brings up the race, it never says you're racing against anyone. Which means you need to stop comparing your race versus the race of other people. Which means they might have the new job, and you may not, it just means it wasn't your time yet. Which means they might be happy in a relationship, but it still might be your time to be single and love yourself first. Some of us got to stop comparing our races with everybody else. And so look, runs the race. But not also in this race, it never said you were running against someone. And oftentimes when we think of races, we think we got to go as fast as possible. But here's the beauty and being in your race with God. God says, I will put you at a pace I know you can handle. Right. That for me, I'll be honest, if I set this treadmill on the fastest level, I'll look silly. Because that's not the pace that my body can handle. Right. right? If I set this pace here, I can handle it. And we gotta learn the beauty of being in the race in a race with God. The beauty of going forward in this spiritual race is God says, I never put you at a pace. Hey, that's cool. I never put you at a pace that you can't handle. Amen. That's why the text says, He'll never put 
more on you than you can bear. And in your race with God, you're going to understand he's put you at a pace you can have it. Some of you, you want the new job. You're not ready for that position of leadership. Be content where you are. You want the higher level. You want the promotion. But God says, that's not the pace I want you on right now. But also, begin the verse 2. If you're going to run this race, you got to do it looking unto Jesus. Because here's where we get messed up. We run our race, but we're looking at everybody else. We run our race. And we're trying to do God's will, but we're too busy having our focus everywhere else. Yeah. Right? We run in this race. Ooh, but I like how they live it. Yeah. They, they, they buying everything, they posting their jewelry, they posting their new shoes. I, I like that. Ooh, I, I like how they ministry look. Ooh, they got the new lights and they be making TikToks. And, ooh, I, I like that relationship. They look so happy and cool. And we run in our race, but we're looking at everybody else going to find out. You bumping your head. Because you can't see what's in front of you. And many times, the reason why we bump our heads in life is because we took our focus off of the wrong thing. Prove it with Bible. Y'all remember when Jesus walked on water? Do y'all remember that question? Yeah. And, 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 and Jesus is walking on water. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to walk on there with you. Jesus said, come on. And Peter is walking on the water with Jesus. But the text says, Peter began to look at the strength of the storm instead of taking his eyes off of Jesus. And so, watch, he began to sink. Many of us are like Peter tonight. We can't move forward and we start sinking because we took our focus off of Jesus. <sighs> That's why the Bible says, I will look unto the hills from which my help comes from. My help comes from who? The Lord. What are you looking at tonight? Is your focus on the worldly things? Or is your focus on Jesus? Because Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. What is your focus on tonight? What Jesus? It says, looking unto Jesus, the what? Author and what? Finisher of our faith. That peep this in text. The reason why this Hebrew writer says, when you're running your race, moving forward, you got to look unto Jesus, is because Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. Because first, this teaches us. That in this spiritual journey, in this race that we're trying to go forward, it requires us to run the race with faith. And so it says the reason, if you got to run this race with faith, is the reason why I'm telling you to look unto Jesus while running this race with faith is because Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. That, that Jesus is the alpha and the omega. Notice what it calls Jesus. That's why I like this version. It called him the author. Now notice in a book, if you wrote the book, that makes you the what? Which means after later writing the book, if you wrote it, you also know how the book ends. That's why it says look to Jesus. Because he wrote your life's journey. And because he wrote it, because he's the author, he knows how your life journey ends. And that's why you got to look to Jesus. Because Jesus, because he knows how you're going to start and because he knows how you're going to end, now he's the one you need to walk with every journey of the way. That's why you got to run this race looking to Jesus. Because when you walk this race with Jesus, watch, because he knows how to end, he can steer you in the right direction. Because he says, if I let you go this way, this will delay your ending. But let me get you back on the right path because I know how your story ends. Right. So it says, walk this race looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Watch. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured 
cross. Let's read it again. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Remember I told you, you're going to have to endure. Watch this. The reason why you got to endure is because Jesus had to endure the cross first. And so look, it says, look to Jesus, not only because Jesus can walk this by with you because he knows how it starts and how it ends, but also the reason why you got to look to Jesus and allow him to walk out your race with you it is because he's been there before. Aren't you glad that you have a Savior who's been where you've been before? That, that Jesus don't just tell you how to handle stuff. But G Jesus said, I need to know how to tell him to handle something, but I don't know what it feels like to live in sin. So what Jesus did, Jesus wrapped on flesh and came to earth. And so everything you have faced, Jesus can tell you how to get through it because he was here. How do I handle fake people? Look to Jesus. He shows you. Because he had to endure a fake person, Judas. How do I handle not having support from family? Look to Jesus. He knows it's like his own brothers didn't believe who he was. How do I handle all of this stuff? Jesus says, I can help you through it because I've been through it myself. And so when you look to Jesus, Jesus, it says, for the joy that was set before him. Watch this. Here's the last point. Here's why you got to get rid of your baggage. Here's why you got to be focused forward. It's because there's greater on the other side. Amen. That there's more to your story. There's greater than what you see now. And so what it's saying is, Jesus, what was the joy that was set before him? The, the joy was raising again on the third day and saving all of our souls for sin. But what did he have to endure? He endured the cross. And many of us, we want our Sunday experiences without suffering through our Friday. We want the platform without the pain. We want the crown, but we don't want the cross. Right? We want the happy relationship, but we don't want the problem and the responsibility of communicating. We want all this good stuff, but we don't want to endure it. And let me tell you, there's a price to play. What, what did I say last week? There is a burden that comes with every blessing you get. Some of us, if you want the blessing, you got to learn how to endure the burden. So here it is. He had to endure the cross that was set before him. He, in order to get to the joy that was set before him, he had to endure some stuff. And that's why I tell people all the time, you better be careful how you get jealous of certain folk. Because you don't know what they had to endure to get to where they are. You, you, you better stop judging people whenever praise breaks come. You be like, oh, don't take all that. Like, you get happy every Sunday? Like, it ain't that good. Like, come on, like, chill. Like, you run, you're doing too much. You spend slobbing, good, coping, right? We, we get mad, but you don't understand what they had to endure yeah, yeah, yeah. to get to where they are, right? You got to learn that before you can get your crown, you first got to endure some stuff. But here's where it gets better. Remember, I said this greater to your story. Look, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and watch, he has now sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That, that after Jesus endured the things that came with his grace, he now gets to sit next to his father. That after you endure this race, after you finally let go of the baggage, God has a position where he will sit you. And we may not be sitting on the right hand of the Father, but some of us, God has some seats he wants you to sit in. But you got to learn how to do what I'm doing. So tonight, ask yourself the question. What is your baggage? What is it in my life that I got to let go of? 
Let, let's do that now. Let's, let's do it real practice. Everybody, buy your hands close your eyes. Let's, let's do it. Right now, in this moment, I want you to just simply, just think about it. Th think about what, what's in my life that, that's weighing me down. You know, for the past two weeks, Sam has made a call for us to go forward. I know God is calling me forward. Although I may not know where, I know that he is calling me forward. What is it in my life that's weighing me down, right? For some, just envision who is in my life that I know God has called me to move on from. I know he has, but, but I don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation yet. I'm not ready, right? What's weighing you down? For some, what, what, what's that happening? Like, what, what, what's that habit? You, you know what your habit is. You know what that addiction is. What is it? That's weighing you down. Right? What, what, what's that old mentality? What's that one lie you keep allowing the enemy to pull things into your head? And now you find yourself believing it sometimes. What is it that God is calling you to lay aside? What's that sin? Text that lets out of your way and sin. So, so what's the sin? That's in your life that's weighing you down. What, what's that lustful sin? What, what is that prideful sin? What, what, what is that glut, like that, that sin that you just always want more than what you need? What is that sin? What is that one thing you keep missing the mark on? That's weighing you down to that. I want you to think about it. Now for some, after you've identified that, what is it that you're having to endure right now? Right? What are you having to endure? What's that thing you prayed and you prayed for God to take it away, but it's still in your life? What's that thing you asked for deliverance from, but God still has you there? So we need to pray for endurance. Lastly, I've actually envisioned all of these things that's weighing you down, and for some, it, it looks kind of dark, right? You're like, ooh, thinking of him, ah, I don't like that. Thinking of that, oh, I can't stand that. I'm thinking of what I'm having to endure, I don't like it. Now I need you to envision. Vision this last verse. It says, run the race. Looking to Jesus. And right now, I need you to envision God pulling you through. Uh-huh. Now I need you, for some, I need you to envision walking across that stage with the diploma. For some, I, I need you now to start envisioning yourself walking in the purpose you know God has called you to. Now I need some of us to envision us actually having a good relationship with our parents. Now I need you to actually envision yourself forgiving that person you said you never could. Now I just need you to see it. I need you to actually see yourself actually happy. Not faking it, but see yourself actually being happy. And if you can see that, then naturally you can see the power of God in your life. Because there are some things we know we can't get without the help of God. So when you see it,
We don't want to be distracted by other people. We don't want to be distracted by the, 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 the distractions that the enemy will try to show us. But help us to remain focused on you. And we're coming in with you now. When we finally get to that point of purpose that you've destined for us. At that moment, we will give you all of the glory. All of the honor. All of the praise. For it's in the life-saving, life-changing name of Jesus Christ, we pray now. If you believe it, can you shout amen?